Whatever you want to do. That's the slide on our website. I'll skip that one and come back to it later just for the purpose of time. And then we can jump into poetry. Before we do that, I'd like to invite the uh, current standing president, uh, Mr. Brian Garcia. What the youth need to do now and what the youth need moving forward for the organization and also importantly for the nation here as United and how we interact with each other and what we can do.
how they're going to be impacted, the individuals they should speak to. So there's a system in place that can enable them to have a smooth transition. All the other cultures, at least those some of my colleagues and friends, I know a lot of Chinese and some folks who are from Latin America or Caribbeans that have these systems in place. They're just designed to have honorable with us today, the ambassador. She will be with us today. She's in Washington, D.C. She's with us. She likes to have you. And I'm very young. Yes. And I want to relate to people. I think through relating with each other, we can break those barriers. Let our conversation not be, um, I mean, you, this is a generational problem. You don't understand. I mean, mommy has been understanding up to now. Now she's lost it. So we must cross that. We must keep talking to each other. I know that for us as a, an older generation, many times, truly, we don't understand. But you should help us to understand. And we should also allow us also to help you understand us. So that means we must keep the conversation going. You cannot give what you don't have. So you love yourself. You have confidence in yourself. You must have goals. You must have dreams. If your dream doesn't frighten you, then it's not big enough. But let's, be, let's work together. Don't think I'm, even I'm dreaming, I still dream. Yes. I don't think I'm done yet. So in that aspect, I'm still young. I'm not done. As for you, the way to go is to dream. Dream big. Work hard. Have the confidence. Respect elders. We have the knowledge. We were young sometimes, you don't think so? We were. You don't know what it feels like beyond 60. I am beyond 60. At least I was young sometime. I was like you. So I have that beat and I have this beat at 60. So let's engage, you know. I know what happened in the 90s is not necessarily what's happening now. I still have to fight with technology. My phone, I have to ask my daughter, please, so, so how do I move from here to there? I don't think I will ever really be there where you are, but I try. And I feel good when you, the young people, help me. I appreciate my ignorance, I accept it, but I'm not willing to remain there. I want to engage with you. You get me to the next level. So, start with yourselves. Believe in yourself. And there is no cutting corners about hard work. You see your mom is driving a Benz. You think she woke up one day and she had it? She had to work hard. Look after you and yes, you look for the money to get the Benz to get you to school. So you work hard, so one day you have your own bands, not the one you have inherited from your mom. You earn your own bands, then you have two bands, the one you inherited and the one you worked for. But when I look around, I can see all the enthusiasm, I can see the ambitions, so I wish you good luck. Thank you very much, Honor Road. Very much so appreciate that. Uh, I am Oliver Woneha. I'm your ambassador sitting in Washington, D.C. I shake hands with President Obama on your behalf. <laughs> Excellent. Um, greatly appreciate it. Yes, you may be excused. 
Uh, the Honorable had very few time, a very very few minutes to spend with us, but the few words I believe she mentioned and that she expressed, the communication, all of it was very enriching, at least for me it was. I've spoken with her, I've developed rapport. I encourage everyone here, actually, to take a few seconds here on American soil. We need to leverage those resources. She's here to understand our needs, our problems. Breaking Bears has been identified as an organization which is in great unison and of value to the embassy. We are working towards trying to eliminate and prevent any issues that we as Ugandans have here in the U.S. in terms of the decisions we're making to become citizens of value, areas of where we can try to become more useful, finding ways of how we can become individuals that can make an impact greatly in society here in the U.S. I think we all can acknowledge that you know our parents or their, your parents' parents have come here because they want a better life. They want to be able to make an impact to benefit not just themselves, but their generations to come. Let's make use of that and find ways of how we can learn from each other and build upon those actions which were taken long before we were, were born. And be better, understand each other. No one here is perfect. I'm not, I don't think anyone in this room is. We are imperfect people. We will learn from each other. We will become better through knowledge exchange. And that's how we will rectify any wrongdoings of our elders or of our peers. That being said, we'll move on to the next slide. But I, I really thought that what Honorable said, Oliver Moneka, was very powerful. And I think it'll go a long ways if we keep that in mind in terms of the decisions we're making. Next slide, please. Your ability to get opportunities of being selected for positions or op jobs that will enable you to fuel your mindset and also to create income. We have a lot of people who have a lot of great ideas, people who are entrepreneurs, and even entrepreneurs at some point, they had to work for someone. At some point, nobody goes through a position or a process where they have not worked for another person. You, everyone at some point has worked for someone else. Getting an education helps you do that. You learn about the system here in the U.S., you learn about core values, quantitative analysis or qualitative, how to do presentations, how to look at data, how to interpret information. Education formally allows you to do that. Not everybody is meant to go to college. That's kind of the slide I wanted to have here, just talk about we all have different paths we take. We go left, right, straight, it's up to you. But what I say to at least my peers and those who are younger, just think about the impact of not taking the course of getting some form of education. You can even go to training school. You don't have to go to college. You can go and just get a, a secondary kind of degree, something which will enable you to have some sort of a certification. I have a lot of cousins and relatives who just, they don't, think that education in terms of getting a college degree is what is going to help them because maybe they can't focus in an environment such as school. And I say, you know what, it's fine. Do what works for you, but just make sure you're doing something to better yourself. Learning from another individual or a structured environment is going to help you to make better decisions to help you to get in a position that can enable you to learn and benefit from others in a structured environment. So that's what this, this, this slide is about. It's just, it just reinforcing the fact that we need to learn from each other. We need to learn in a structured environment. Next slide. Uh, this one is on support from businesses from the Ugandan community. I think it's important for us to know that we have a lot of uh, systems in place within our, in our communities um, where we have opportunities to learn from each other the businesses which are ongoing. There's a lot of opportunity for us to, 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 to engage in relationships where we learn from others who have already kind of built and paved the way. People who have already set up stones and pillars in place in our communities, we can learn from things that have worked and things that haven't worked and change it. I mean, that's what life is about. 
You learn from what people have done, and if it doesn't work for you, change it. Structurally, of course. But you find things that would help you, but more importantly, think about not just yourself, but other people. Our communities are there so we can support one another, share each other's skill sets, learn from each other. I have the last point there is making a difference. Have a positive impact on those who are in your social network. And if they're not in your social network and you feel they can learn from you, talk to them. Just reach out to them, have a conversation. Say, is this something that might interest you? I think sometimes the issue we have is uh, that blockade where we make assumptions on things on saying, well, that person wouldn't like to hear what I have to say. Well, you don't know that until you talk to them. Have a conversation, be bold, be brave, have a conversation. Ask somebody if this is something that they might be interested in. The least thing, the worst thing they can say is, you know what, I'm not interested. Or say no. And that's fine, but you know what, you try. You made an attempt. So that being said, <clears throat> this is a slide that I think it, it deserves some sort of uh, feedback. I'd like to hear people's viewpoint. Is there anything on this slide which I'd like to think that some people may have some sort of interest to, to speak on what your views are in terms of mutual gain? Do you feel that your communities that you're currently living in where you're learning from the people that live in your community, are you guys having experiences in where people are sharing knowledge or at least talking to you about things which could be done is there anything that anybody here has experienced that they could share with the group here? Sure. Yeah, and um, my, I think I'll just talk about inspiration and those opportunities that occur here and there, people just take them for granted. While going to school, I was committed to going to school so much that all my days were taken. So I had to look for something to do at night. And there was nothing that I could do at night other than having myself self-employed. So that's what I started with, you know, just a little bit here and there. And the two happened too much in that it's just the same concept like if somebody says, I have weak legs, and the other guy says, I have weak upper body strength. The two combined can scale up. The guy with the strong leg can stand, and the, the other one stands on top with the upper body strength. After the, he scales the wall, the guy with the upper body strength can pull the other guy. So it's that concept of togetherness. You don't have to be all in order to succeed. But what you're good at, combine with what somebody else is good at, will make you fully all. So that's it. Thank you very much. All right, let's go to the next slide here. All right, let's go to the, just the next one over, just make room. All right, so this slide here uh, just has a breakdown. Uh, hopefully everyone can see it. It's a table which has three columns. One, the far left is on education. The different levels of education. Someone who doesn't have high school education, those who've actually achieved their diploma, associate's degree, back. And these children of ours that we are trying to raise learn so fast. So it becomes a, a, a vicious cycle. So when he's also growing up, he does the same. We fear competition. And the only way to compete with the other is to come up with Uganda, come up with all sorts of allegations. Then we have the culture barriers. They tell us, collaborate. They didn't give us an expression why we are doing it. When I was growing up, my mom used to tell me, Tula was a Mugeni Wanya, Tula, Toyokera. But the moment you, you speak up, then you are in the problem. They kill you the hell out of you. I don't know if it happens in America though. Yeah? Uh, so these kind of people, these children we are trying to mentor, to grow up, to grow with us, 
they do not have that creativity aspect. The angle of education does not start at this level where I am or where you are. It starts from a one day old child. These kids are, have the process of learning every single day. Now, I don't know if you, all of you have been to Uganda. Uh, Uganda has a, something called introduction, Okwandula. Uh, Okwandula, those days, was supposed to be something for the few people, for the inner circle of the family. Then somebody came up with this idea of showing off. You see, Uganda and we are primitive. Uh, we, we, we just copy things at wholesale without even understanding what we're doing. And uh, because someone has done it, I'm going to do it. But you don't understand whether that person has the capacity to do it. Kwanjula uh, has lost meaning because of that kind of angle of just commercializing. Then the education sector. When I was growing up, uh, and I was in the, in, the, in, the, in the Ugandan education system. They told me that if you're number one, number two, number three, then you're going to be a successful person. That you're going to be the leaders of tomorrow. And they told me that if in your class you are a class of ten, and you are in the, among the fourth, fifth, and sixth, you are most likely going to be a subordinate. And they also told me that if you are the eighth out of ten, the ninth out of ten, and the last of course, you will fail. So what happened? All of us strive to be among the best because we all want to be successful. So in that process, we started fighting each other. We started working alone, individually, not teamwork. And this went on from my primary school to secondary school to the university level. I knew that for me to work the best in class, among the very best in class, I have to find a way of compromising in the other. So what did I do? I used to find them in the prep time. I don't know if you have prep time in here. And I would disorganize everyone so that they don't read. <laughs> <laughs> then later at night, at around 3 a.m., I come and read. So everyone thinks we are all resting. In that two says, I'm reading. So everyone thinks that ah, ah, we are all in the same boat. When the results come out, I'm among the very best. These guys are like, what happened? How do you do it? In that two says, I am being trained always strive for my own self. Then I get to London. <laughs> First of all, the education system was different. I was told that whatever your teacher tells you, you just take it in. It was a copy and paste syndrome. Whatever I get from the book, as long as you can perform it best, the best. So I got to the University of Roehampton, and things changed. You ask us a question, go and research, look for material, and then present. The first semester was hell on earth. I almost wanted to give up. So I had to kind of think so fast and get to relate into the situation over there. And indeed, in my course of two years, I did it in one and a half, one and a half years because I quickly understood the situation I had. So we, I had to find a way of transforming my mind to relate with those people. And in London, there were so many Ugandans. The only thing that united us were two things. When someone has died and needs money to go back home, or time for having a drink. But when we came up to ask for a unification to make an investment, you will never find a Ugandan. 
because we we we, we are being engineered to, to be believed to believe that you can work alone. To be honest, that you hell working nothing. So the education system is only working for people who are possibly in that kind of intelligence. If the education system was to empower everyone from the artists, then possibly we'll be going far. I have been looking at those statistics of the education system here, that if you're having a diploma, you're possibly earning $1,000. That if you're earning a, a, a degree, you possibly have earning $3,000. So if I was working in the UK, you know, in, in here, uh, America, with my master, I would possibly earning $4,700 every month. I don't know if that includes tax or not. Okay. Uh, it's net. Not it's a gross. It's gross. But there are musicians here who just come and rock the world, primary school dropouts, and earn millions of dollars. You get the, the logic behind. You'll possibly find them who were, they were dancing class, but they are intelligent or creative enough to be to work in the real world. That is the difference. The real power is supposed to be the attitude. But the unfortunate part is that the education system only encourages those in the formal sector. Then the leadership. That is one of the most amazing aspects for Ugandans. Because we have this engineered process of fighting with each other, we also try to fight ourselves when we are competing. A competition in the Ugandan society is about 